You know those movements that you do on the ice that just aren't quite as crisp as they need to be? Maybe it's getting into and out of your RVH, something like that. And even though you work out, maybe you work out with your team. Today I'm going to give you the best body weight exercises for advanced goalies. So you can clean up those movement patterns without going to the gym, without a lot of fuss. Everyone will be like, what, what have you been doing? Your, the other goalies on your team will be like, what is... Has he got a new coach? Those new pads? They'll be, they'll be flummoxed, I'm telling you. Last week I gave you my top five bodyweight exercises for beginners. You can get it here. Uh, if you are a beginner, please start with those exercises. Don't be like, but I want the hard ones. I want to do the hard stuff. No. So it's a, training is about letting the body adapt. It's like building a house. We all want the sick home theater or gym in the basement, <laughs> but you know, we can't just start building that. I couldn't start building that when they, this was just a foundation. I had to wait for them to finish everything else so that then I could, you know, get to where I really wanted to be. So if you're a beginner, start with those beginner drills for at least six weeks, and then you can start perusing these and adding them to your routine. Is that a deal? It's a deal. I trust you. I'm trusting you now. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell. My name is Maria Mountain. I am an exercise physiologist. I specialize in off ice training for hockey goalies. Basically what I do is I help goalies level up. So if that's from going from being the backup to the starter, from college to pro, from adult D league to adult B league, double A AA to triple A, you get the idea. Let's look at five of the best advanced body weight exercises for goalies. If you're watching an advanced video, then my guess is that you probably already do some off ice training. Maybe you go to the gym. I want you to think about, think in your head of like the best two exercises for building leg strength. Have you got them? Do you think about them? Picture them? How you do them? Feel your body doing them? <laughs> so, um, what, you pro what they probably both had in common is they started from the top, went down and back up. So maybe you thought, oh, I'm going to be really smart. Uh, squat lateral. You started from the top, you squatted down, you came back up to the top. Maybe you think, oh, I know, it's just thing single leg squat because those are so good. I start from the top, I squat down, I come back up. Those are all top down strength training drills. But as goalies, one of our key elements is bottom up. So we move around on our knees and then boom, we have to come and recover and drive from the bottom up. But we don't really spend any time training that. So we're gonna work, number one exercise is bottom up single leg squat. As I do this, watch how I'm not using my trail leg at all to kick off. And watch how I'm not letting my body rock forward to bring me out of the bottom. Everything is coming from this single leg. So the, the form is really important. You also probably notice that I'm going fairly slow. I'm coming up to a count of about three or four seconds and trying to make it even, just like if I was on an escalator. I don't want to be pop up here and then go slow the rest of the way. I want that to be really controlled all the way up. So I'm building strength and control through the whole range. And probably on the ice, you even notice sometimes when you push, it's almost like there's a little lag, like you're, and then you get the power. So we want to build that strength in the bottom range to reduce that lag when you're doing it explosively and trying to move really, really quickly. With this one, start with just four on each side, but coming up for that count of three to four seconds. When you come back down, so like here I'm at the top, I'm just coming right back down like that. I'm not trying to come all the way down slowly. I'm just working that bottom up pattern. The next one is your RVH recovery. I have a Airx pad down here. So you want something, a fairly thick, dense cushion um, to help protect your knee, but also to give a little bit of height off the floor the way that your knee stack would. I'm not going to slide into it as if I was on the ice. I'm really just trying to help 
you learn this pattern. So we're going to come down into the RVH and get that lean over, you know, as if we're at the post. Not trying to crank on our knees and ankles, but kind of get this hip position. And then we're going to come out of it, pushing up from this leg. So here, pushing up out of this leg. I know when we're on the ice, it depends where we're going to move from this. Maybe we're going to come here and push out, but I'm just trying to work on control of that pattern, teaching your muscles in a slower and controlled manner how to get into and out of that position. You'll go slowly about three seconds in, three seconds out, only four to six repetitions on each side. This isn't one where more is better. More is going to be more wear and tear. So just take your time. If you're feeling any pain in your hip as you do this, or pain in your knee or ankle, then just leave this one out. It's not the most comfortable position, but it shouldn't be painful for you. Let me know if you've ever used that bottom up squat or used this RVH motor pattern training in your off ice training, drop a comment below to let me know how much it improved your performance on the ice or how you felt it improved your performance on the ice. It always helps, you know, other goalies that come watch this video to learn from you guys as well, not just to learn the drills from me, but to learn your real life experience and how it helped. The next exercise is a knee pad exercise. So we'll fire on our knee pads, lickety split. These are the warrior. G5 knee pads, and I love them. Um, so we're going to get into our single knee balance. Um, so if again, if you haven't done the beginner, if you're like single knee balance, means you haven't done the beginner sequence of exercises yet. So start with the beginner sequence of exercises and then come on back and we'll, we'll regroup. But for this one, we're going to alternate. So not only are we gonna work on getting that single knee balance, but this time we're gonna work on sort of shifting and finding that balance. So getting more dynamic with it. And I'm trying to hold for a count of five on each side and really just kind of move, move into it and find that balanced position. I'm bracing lightly with my abdominals. That sort of helps stabilize my torso. And then my hip stabilizers have to do a whole lot of work and there's gonna be a little learning curve too. Like, hey, how, how do we, what, what are you doing? <laughs> but what we're doing is we're taking out these little energy leaks or these, and these little energy leaks or, you know, shifts that put us a little bit out of balance or a little out of position. Out of position because maybe you'll move out of position and the puck will go by you, but also we don't want you out of position because if I'm having to be here, or I kind of am a little off kilter and I'm here and the play goes back that way, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to sort of recover. Whereas if I can get here and I'm trying to project my body a little bit over the puck, just like you would on the ice, but if I'm balanced, it makes it much easier for me to move explosively and quickly in any direction. The next two are what's called overcoming isometrics. And we're going to work in the outer range. So a lot of you have probably heard, maybe your goalie coaches said, or you've heard goalie coaches on the Ingo Mag podcast or whatever, um, that they want you to play with a narrower stance because when your stance is really wide, you don't have any power there. It's true that you have less power when you're in your wide stance, but it's also true that you guys actually never train power in the outer range. So why would you expect to have power there? So I'm not saying that you don't need to narrow your stance. That's for you and your goalie coach to sort out. But I do know that you can use more power in your outer range. And I have specific ways to train that. This is one of them. So we're going to get against a wall or something that absolutely isn't going to move. And I'm going to go almost as if I'm in a really wide stance. So I'm low in my hips. My knee is bent, my shoulders and hip are touching, my shoulder and hips touching, and I'm gonna drive into the wall. And I'm gonna push hard, hard, hard for five seconds and then relax. And I'm going to do three to five repetitions on each side. When we do overcoming isometrics, we can exert maximum force 
into this immovable object. So it's, it's really the same as if I, if I had a machine where I could push, you know, a load of like 225 pounds, it's the same type of training effect. So the thing with overcoming isometrics is it's specific to the angle of training, which for us is perfect because what we're trying to train is this outer range power. The other progression, we need that power from a standing position. We probably need it even more from our butterfly. Get your hip and shoulder touching the wall. So don't, you know, get into this kind of position. Hip and shoulder touching, staying tall in your torso, tall in your hips. That foot is outside, so not here in your power position, but outer range. And same deal. Pushing, generating that power five seconds, rest and recover. Doing three to five on each side. Could you alternate sides? Yes, absolutely, you could do that. I know it seems counterintuitive. It's like, oh, that's not, that won't really do much. That is huge. That is like max strength training in that outside range. So when you're already stretched and you need to get an extra little push, instead of having to load all the way up here to get across, you'll be able to generate that power from out here. So those are the top five advanced bodyweight exercises for goalies. And if you are watching this video, it tells me you are either an advanced goalie or you are a goalie who aspires to be an advanced goalie. Either way, it tells me that you might be at the stage where you're just like, you know what, Maria, I just want you to design all my programs for me and help me along the way. How would that be? Could you do that for me? The answer is yes, I could absolutely do that for you. There's a link in the description that says, see if you qualify to work with me. Uh, and so then what we do is you fill out a little application. We have a chat on Zoom to see if it's the right fit, if we're going to work together to really get you to that next level in your career. But you have to be serious about doing the work, committed to doing it and be like, yeah, I just want to know what to do so I can do it. Thank you again for supporting this channel. My passion, as you might have noticed, is helping goalies win more games with fewer injuries. And when you hit that like button, it actually really helps my channel grow. It helps get this information out to more goalies all over the world. So I appreciate you for it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Uh, so make sure you hit the like button <laughs> and subscribe and I will catch you next time.